Life Audio. How do you define true success? That's the subject former Chick-fil-A CEO Dan Cathy discusses on the Encouragement for You podcast, plus Don Sapaw on Senior Care. Welcome to the Encouragement for You podcast, brought to you by Encouragement Communications in association with the Salem Web Network and is part of the Life Audio Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. In just a moment, your host, Don Hawkins, will introduce today's episode. First, a word from our sponsors. Is life feeling chaotic? I get it. I'm Rachel Wojo, host of the Untangling Life podcast. Don't miss the passionate encouragement and faith-based resources you need to help you clear your head and calm your heart. As Shell says, it feels like Rachel always knows what I need to hear. She keeps it real and is so humble. Her podcast is just the cherry on top. Enjoy Untangling Life with Rachel Wojo on lifeaudio.com or your favorite podcast app now. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. Many people today measure success by financial status, popularity, or a successful career. Most people would consider longtime Chick-fil-A CEO Dan Cathy successful, but his perspectives on true success in this discussion with host Don Hawkins may surprise some. What are some of the most important values for a, a person who's in business or a person who's working for somebody else that they need to incorporate uh, in their lives? You know, one of the, one of the neat things is, is the simplicity that uh, is captured for us in some of the wise people that um, wisdom was captured by, by writings over the years. And Solomon is a, is a good example of that. He was a very, very successful, not just as the king of Israel, but he was a he was a tremendous herdsman. He was knew a lot about breeding of animals and so forth. He was a great investor. And this is one of the things that he said that I've really taken fresh note of. He says, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I think he was telling us, Don, that life is just difficult enough that we're never going to be able to figure out it on, it, on its own. And certainly today we realize that no matter how smart you are, uh, it's hard to escape some of the, the problems and the pitfalls that we're facing in society and the economy today. But he said this, in all your ways, if you'll just acknowledge the Lord, then he'll direct your paths. And I know that being unclosed on Sunday is one of the ways that we've acknowledged the Lord in our business. My son, Aunt Ross, when we were riding the car one day when he was just about three or four years old, driving in the car, and he knew he was trying to talk to me, but he knew I wasn't paying him much attention. And he grabbed my chin and he jerked it over. He huh. said, Dad, listen to me. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I think that's kind of sometimes how I feel the Lord might be speaking to me. Dan, just, would you just listen to me? And just if we just acknowledge the Lord, just giving him the common courtesy that we would do a family member, we'll find he really will help us make better choices and decisions. And the Bible yeah. is chock full of that kind of wisdom and insight. And, and, Dan, that brings us to the point that if uh, when all else fails, we need to read and follow the directions carefully that we find in that book of books in the Bible. And and oftentimes we get so caught up in our own plans and our own ideas that we fail to acknowledge him by studying his word. Yeah, but after a while, though, Don, we see the folly of our mistakes and we get into, you know, the muck and mire and realize, hey, this is not working. And uh, someone said when the student is ready the teacher will appear. And I think we just, unfortunately, the way the human mind and uh, operates, we kind of get ourselves back into a corner before we're willing to to have a sense of humility and say, hey, 
maybe God does have something to say to us. And, of course, when we open his word, we're going to see some wonderful verses of Scripture that if we'll just meditate on God's word day and night, as it says in Joshua 1, 8 and Psalms 1, 1 through 3, we'll find that he really will, uh, does want to bless us and use us as a channel of blessing into the lives of other people. If you're looking for a definition of success, that's the ultimate definition. Those two passages of Scripture Dan Cathy mentioned, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, and then certainly Joshua chapter 1, uh, that whole section there, verses eight and 7, 8, and 9 especially. And in fact, he talks about prosperity and success, uh, but uh, the perspective that Joshua was given from the Lord there uh, is quite different from the way most people today define success. Yeah, you know, he, he said that he wanted them to conquer the land. Every every place that your foot is going to tread, I'm going to give you this land. Because he wanted them to know that there is a God in Israel. And, uh, you know, Israel was to, was to stand for the kind of relationship that he really wanted to have with, with everybody, Gentiles alike. So it's a very, very powerful message that really is timeless. Right now, let's go to the phones. Our first call is from Virginia. Buddy is listening in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, hi. Yes, you're on the air with Dan. Go ahead. Thank you. First of all, I'd just like to say I'm a, I'm a raving fan of Chick-fil-A, and uh, I used to work for Chick-fil-A back in 2007. Great. In Spotsylvania County of Fredericksburg. Okay. I, I like sampling chicken nuggets for a hmm. operator owner there, but I just had a question for you, Dan. Uh, what do you attribute to the success to Chick-fil-A. I mean, is it your your father, Truett's Kathy, just his principles, his Christian faith and hard work? I mean, can you tell me uh, maybe what, what do you attribute the success to Chick-fil-A? Well, I think it's all those things, buddy. And, uh, how, you know, people come to eat at Chick-fil-A, I think that what they tell us is they love the food, they love the fresh squeezed lemonade, the taste of a Chick-fil-A sandwich, or they, they love the fact that we're closed on Sunday, they love maybe the service. So there's a whole variety of reasons that are there. Some of the parents love what's in our kids' meal. Uh, we don't have Monster of the Month, as you sometimes see at other fast food restaurants in a kids' meal, but we have something that talks about literacy and values and, and um, encourages discussions between parents and children. So there's a variety of different things. But I'd say over and above all that, buddy, as you mentioned, uh, is I, I think God has just simply blessed the business. And we're willing to acknowledge him, as Solomon admonished us to do, as we said here earlier. And uh, we're very thankful. We we had a 12.5% sales increase last year when a lot of our competition, you know, were, were suffering a lot of losses and so forth. So we don't say that we're, we're better than other people. We're just trying to do what we know to do and do it right and stay really focused on the customer. And uh, we're in the process of even right now improving the service levels to our customers based on a passage of Scripture from Matthew chapter 5, verse 41, about going the second mile. So we're going at it. We just appreciate your call. Hey, we appreciate hearing from you. Thank you so much for sharing with us, buddy. Let us pray for you, okay? Okay. Lord, we pray for Buddy. We thank you for his positive encouragement and affirmation, and we ask your blessing on his life, on his career, on his family. And most of all, Lord, may he glorify you in every part of his life. We commit him to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Buddy. Great to hear from you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All the way from Vicksburg, Mississippi, Phil is on the line. Thank you. I just um, I just wanted to call in and... and um had a comment and um, a question for uh, Dan. Okay, go ahead. You're on with Dan. Okay. First of all, Dan, um, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I really admire the way you have structured your restaurants, especially uh, being closed on Sundays. It has passed down through the lines to your other owners. Uh, one in uh, respect is uh, Mr. Keys over there in Flowood, Mississippi. I guess Keys Hayes. And uh, he's a dear friend of mine. We went to high school together, and uh, he's a he's a wonderful person. Well, we've gone over there several times to eat. He has a, a very uh, wonderful reading program for the kids. Uh, he's even had the uh, kids to come in, and he's taken them out on little uh, hay rides there at the restaurant. Wow. Well, that's great. So, we appreciate you uh, checking in with us and giving us that report on keys. We, yeah. We, we select operators that we think would have a positive impact on people. We even also select operators based on would this be a good person for 
for my son or daughter to work with. So it's a pretty high bar we set, and he's been with us for well over 25 years now and uh, very proud of his influence. He, he and his wife have done a remarkable job. Yeah, his, now, the, his name's Tara, and uh, she's very active in the marketing of that business. We were just together with Keys and Tara and all our Chick-fil-A operators out in Long Beach. And, Don, I don't, we haven't mentioned this, but, uh, Phil, you may have found this of interest that we had uh, Rick Warren. Yes. He spoke to us on Sunday night. We also had uh, Jim Collins, who wrote the book Built to Last. We mm -hmm. had uh, some really great coaches, Tommy Tuberville and Frank Beamer. And then uh, Dave Ramsey, who's a guy that's quite a radio personality mm -hmm. himself, talking about personal finances. Yes. Great, great, great authority on personal finances, yes. So, Phil, it was great to have uh, Keys Hayes as we, as we had this big Chick-fil-A family reunion in Long Beach. I bet that was, that was great. Yeah. Now, did you also have a question, Phil, for Dan? I did. You know, uh, I'm sitting here in Vicksburg, Mississippi. I'm, I'm in the role of a security guard. I'm uh, at a motel that's being built. And I'm kind of hungry right now, so I was just wondering, Mr. Kathy, could you just kind of airmail me by Dove some uh, <laughs> Chick-fil-A products? Would that exactly. be exactly okay? what? What did you have in mind? Maybe it was one of those uh, cookies and cream milkshake, maybe that we could uh, slip over there to you. Ooh, sir! <laughs> maybe a hot Chick-fil-A sandwich. Those two crucial pickles, or well, yes, we'll we're, uh, we'll come to your rescue. Just uh, you just look for a Chick Fil A restaurant. Maybe after you get off work here. There you go. Hang in there. Let us pray for you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dan. Lead us in prayer for Phil, if you will. Yes, Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to con converse together, even by radio, and and uh, thank you for Phil and for his work that he's doing and influence that he's having there on the job and in the community as well. Thank you that you want to use us as business people to impact the lives of other people. Thank you for the scripture that reminds us to let our light shine, that men may see our works and glorify and honor you. Pray for protection for Phil. Thank you so much for Keys Hayes and Tara and all the other Chick-fil-A operators that do such a great job that want to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll be back with more after a brief word from our sponsors. And don't forget to listen for Dawn's live weekend talk show, Encouragement Live, heard Saturdays at 7.05 p.m. Central Time on American Family Radio and other radio stations around the country, as well as on the worshipchannel.org. Hey everybody, I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. We're hosts of the Kainos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in an everyday settings. To learn more and subscribe, go to lifeaudio.com. The senior population in America is growing exponentially, and many adult children are left to care for mom and dad. Don Saypaw is the founder and CEO of Restoration Senior Living, and he shares important perspectives on caring for seniors. If we go back 100 years, back when, uh, back when your father and my grandfather uh, were, were, were not born yet, at the turn of the century, if you looked at health care, all of health care, the majority of health care was provided by a church by a church-run hospital, by a community hospital that had very, very strong uh, influence from the Christian community. We had the Baptist health care system and the Methodist and the Episcopal and the Lutheran, just to name a few. If you looked at caring for senior adults, the church took an active role in caring for widows and widowers. We, we didn't have Social Security. We, we didn't have Medicare. We didn't have Medicaid. And then if you look at the educational system, most of the schools had a very strong Christian influence. And so 100 years ago, senior adults, health care, and education were dominated by the church. The, the Christian community was an active participant in providing for these three services. Now, why did that decline? Why do you, why do you suppose things change? Obviously, the government took a much larger <laughs> role. <laughs> Well, you know, you're exactly right, Don. What happened is, uh, during the Depression, uh, I think the church took a step back and said, you know what, let somebody else do it. Let's let the government step into our lives. And then by the time we got into the 60s, you know, we, we saw a radical change as it related to Medicare 
and Social Security became much more prevalent. And from the 30s until today, we've seen the educational system aggressively push to have government control as opposed to the church. And so we, while we have seen as of late the explosion, you know, of private education, and they, the government speaks a lot about perhaps vouchers for Christian education or for selecting higher quality education, it, it's a slow process. It's a lot like you know, turning around a battleship. You don't do it quickly. Yeah. And so what we see occurring within healthcare, education, and in caring for seniors, I think it will take a few decades before the church regains what I believe is our biblical and rightful responsibility to truly care for seniors. Uh, Don, when we talk about uh, caring for seniors from a Christian perspective, uh, there's a biblical mandate that you've based your philosophy on, uh, and it's based on some passages in Psalms. That's correct. You know, in Psalm 71, verse 18, we're told, And even when I'm old and gray, O God, don't forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Yeah. You know, Don, if we think about that, I can just visualize the writer of Psalms weeping, saying, oh my goodness, I'm yeah. old and gray, and yet I look around, and the environment in which I live, they are forsaking seniors. They are basically warehousing seniors. Yeah. They are taking old people and putting them on the shelf and merely babysitting them until they pass on. And yet the psalmist is, is in my vision, screaming, saying, you don't really understand. I have so much more to give. Inside these frail bones, inside this squeaky voice and the trembling hands, I have a passion to live. I have much to give, not only to this generation, but to future generations. And, and so as a hallmark, we use this scripture to really challenge our staff to work with our seniors to work with our residents so we can get the most out of them. We, we get them involved in activities within the community, uh, whether it's with a, a, a Christian school yeah. or whether it's with vacation Bible school or a health fair or just simply playing bingo or going to the mall. We, we create very unique opportunities for interaction. So we start with just the basics the intergenerational activities, and then we work from there and we try to develop within them the opportunity for them to share their faith, for them to be able to be an influence on younger generations. You know, Don, what I find often when I walk into one of our facilities is I can see a 90-year-old woman sitting here loving on a 5- or 6-year-old kid, yeah. and, and you know what? They're speaking the same language. They're both desperately seeking that relationship. Yeah. And for the rest of that day, my 90-year-old woman, resident, it's brightened her day. And so one of the things that we combat often in working with senior adults is fear. You know, it's not fear specifically of death. It is loneliness. Mm. It is the fear of loss of companionship. And we know as believers, that fear is the only emotion that God cannot experience. You know, God tells us in his word that perfect love casts out all fear. Yeah. And, and therefore, the God that we worship cannot experience fear, and that's one emotion that we as, you know, humans constantly battle. Yeah. In, in working with senior adults, it's very common. There is obviously fear of an illness, fear of some debilitating disease, a fear of just loss of ambulation and loss of relationships. But, but I think that's something that we can help combat as believers by merely bringing the Word into the process and ministering to them and providing a great degree yeah. of comfort. Our first call comes from Barbara, listening in El Paso, Texas. Good evening. I thought y'all would never <laughs> get me on. Oh, we're going to get you on. I know, I know. But, okay, first of all, I am a senior citizen. I am 67 years young. 
Oh, you're not a senior. So you're you're a very young person today, Barbara. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I'm living with my parents right now. Hmm. Until I can, I'm help, helping them out whatever I can do. My dad is 91 years old, or 91 years young, as he says. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. He's got the early stages of dementia, and the doctors say that his brain is shrinking. Mom wants him to stop driving. She's 88, and she's young. She is young. I mean, she's, she's something else. But what I wanted to know is how... Besides praying that the Lord would, would make the clutch quit working on the truck, how can we get him to stop? Because he is so stubborn. He has got a stubborn streak on him a mile long. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> and I was just wanting to see what we could do to, because he goes out, 91 years old, he goes out and gathers cans so he can crush them and sell them. Wow. So it sounds like he's he's using that to sort of keep himself young, uh, but it could be that his driving has uh, become a situation where he's a hazard to himself and others. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. That's what yeah. the deal is. I'm so glad you called us, Barbara. Let's talk to Don Sapa about this. Don, one of those tough decisions is when do you pull the car keys and how? A couple of things. First of all, you, you need to, uh, in his periods when he is incredibly lucid and you and your mom and your dad can sit down together, you need to begin educating him as to the next stage of dementia. He needs to really understand that right now he understands what's going on in spite of the frustration that he has trying to find the right words and the difficulty of you know, driving or performing household chores. But you need to help him recognize that this is going to get worse. And then second you need to begin negotiating with him just as you would an adolescent, you know, who's just learning to drive. You need to negotiate with him perhaps a driving contract where you say, Dad, here's what we're going to do. On these days, you can drive, and on these days, you can't. And when it's bad weather, you're, you know, and so you begin negotiating to a point where he accepts the responsibility for his behavior today. And if he doesn't, he needs to understand that there are consequences. And the consequences are he could be a harm to himself, to others, or perhaps he could lose his driver's license altogether. Sir, that's all good and well, but my dad will not admit that he is wrong in anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, okay. that's the way he All is. All right, well, that, well that's tough he's to deal with. Mood, he, he's on mood levelers and, and stuff like that, but he doesn't think he's crazy. He doesn't think he's got mood, mood swings. He doesn't think that he's, he's, his driving is bad. He doesn't yeah. think he's wrong at all. But Barbara, Everybody Barbara, else is wrong. here's the thing, Barbara. He's, he's very much like an adolescent. Have you ever known an adolescent that ever thought they were wrong about anything? Nope. And see, and, and your dad is in that second adolescence, that second childhood, so to speak. And, and that's why what Don has told you in terms of, of putting a, an agreement, a contract, a verbal contract, or even a written contract together with him uh, to deal with this, these issues and having consequences if, if he gets a traffic ticket, uh, if he puts a dent or a ding on that vehicle or any of those kinds of things. You just need to remember that this is a negotiation. You're dealing with an adult who, as you mentioned, Don, has reverted back to some adolescent behaviors with regards to stubbornness over an issue that is obvious to those around them. Thank you for listening to this episode of Encouragement for You with Don Hawkins, host of Encouragement Live Radio and author of over 25 books, including Never Give Up and Master Discipleship Today. You can find more about Don and his books at EncouragementLive.org. Encouragement for You is a production of Encouragement Communications with the Salem Web Network and LifeAudio.com. Editing by Phil Gebers. Production by Elizabeth Andrade. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. Let me take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on Encouragement for You. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. 
They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Stay encouraged and join us next time for Encouragement for You. Hey everybody, I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. And we're hosts of the Kainos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in everyday settings. The word kainos means new, and that's exactly what we want to do on our podcast. Bring something new from what is old in our faith. And on this show, you might hear us explore topics like what the Bible has to say about student loan forgiveness, discuss how the satanic temple affects our view of religious liberty in America, or even question why is it that so many people are having rapture anxiety. To learn more about the podcast, go to lifeaudio.com.